Again, thanks for coming tonight. We've got um, a great program for you to be, all get informed about this Boothy virtual opportunity. And the CEO of Boothy, Ben Wong, is joining us. Um, but uh, make sure you keep yourself on mute for now, and we'll uh, have time for questions later. Put them in the chat, or um, at the end, I'll ask you to raise your hand, and I'll call on you, and you can ask them directly. Uh, right now, I'm going to turn things over to Vanessa, our programs director. She'll give you a little information in general about Open Studios, and then we'll get underway. Thank you, Diane, and thank you everyone for joining us tonight and for being registered SF Open Studios artists. We're really excited to be returning this year um, in person and virtually to uh, reconnect with our community at large. Also going to quickly shout out our two other staff members that are here with us tonight assisting with this event. We have Nick Maltaliati, who many of you have seen and known out in the streets doing our art neighborhoods um, exhibitions and who will be doing our tech support tonight. And we also have the newest member of our team, Anna Nicole Stutzman, who is our West Side coordinator and program assistant, who is doing leading some great work over in San Francisco's West Side, um, coordinating an art walk, which is new this year, that will be in conjunction with SF Open Studios weekend two. So if you are interested in participating in that and receiving some extra promotion through that special initiative, uh, make sure to reach out to Anna and her email is Anna at artsman.org and that's weekend two of Open Studios, October 29th and 30th. Um, but uh, before I hand the reins over to Ben from Boothy, I do just wanted to give a quick recap of open studios and how excited we are to have all of you with us and that and to remind everyone that we are offering virtual open studios this year um, in response to survey responses from last year's open studios asking that we still have a component that is available to folks who are either outside of the city of San Francisco or are uncomfortable to open their uh, spaces to the public just yet. So virtual open studios will be on October 26th of this year from five to seven, this time on Boothy, which is um, like the sister of Booth Central with some uh, additional perks and some new gadgets to use that Ben will be discussing and sharing with us tonight. And um, real quick before we get into it, um, I do want to uh, let everyone know that if we have been victims in the past to Zoom bombing, unfortunately, while technology has opened the doors for us to be even more connected with even more individuals uh, beyond our geographic location, um, it unfortunately also makes us vulnerable to some unwarranted attacks. So we here at ArtsFan are committed to creating spaces where all of our community members feel safe and can feel that they are coming together to be able to exchange ideas and have discussion without fear of judgment. Um, uh, that being said, any acts of hostility or aggression against any of our community members or any of our presenters will not be tolerated. In the case of a cyber attack, we will immediately end our presentation to protect our speakers, our staff and our audience, and of course, all of you here with us tonight. Uh, should that happen, we do apologize in advance. However, we hope that is not necessary tonight. So knock on wood. And with that, I'm gonna let Ben Wong, CEO of Boothy, take it away. Thank you. Well, thank you, Vanessa. Uh, and good evening, everyone. Um, thanks for having me on this webinar. And we are excited um, to be hosting Artspan um, Open Studio event again. Um, and that you will be on the our new platform um, that we affectionately call Boothy um, for obvious reasons. Um, and for those of you who participated um, in events hosted on Booth Central in the past, you will find that the setup process and how it works will be quite different, um, but much easier. Um, so let me share my screen real quick. Okay. Let's 
let me, okay, here we go. So the main difference is that um, we took the concept of a physical move and made it completely a independent thing. So it's not necessarily tied to a specific, specific e event. So once you created this move, uh, you could use it to participate in a virtual event like Artspan and or even completely outside of it. Um, it's kind of like a physical booth that you have that you own. And then you could take that physical booth and you could kind of drive it, you know, it's a metaphor to drive it to an event and actually participate in the event. And then you could have it, you know, also available outside the event. So the first thing you would want to do is obviously go to boofy.co and then uh, sign up for an, for an account. And once you signed up, you will see this, uh, this is the first thing you will see. Um, it's basically a booth uh, page here. And then you will see on top booths, collections, and events. So the first thing you would want to do is obviously create your booth. Um, and I'm just going to use a, a fictional author and create a booth for that author. So I'm going to call this author John Chess and just simply hit create booth. And then immediately it will show you that um, on the right side, what this booth looks like at this moment. And then on the left side is where you would actually um, make changes to customize your booth. So the first thing you would wanna do is go in here to the settings. And then this is your booth name. And in this case is a John Chess. Um, and then the URL that you want this to, to have. So here I would wanna call it John Chess, right? Anything you, you know, anything you wanna call the booth URL. And then you obviously want it to be public because you want people to be able to come in without uh, having to enter a passcode. And then any changes that you made here, you hit apply, and then you go back. And then you're just basically editing different sections to customize the booth. So for branding here, you could have a different color. And as, as, as you change it, you will see it immediately changes on the right, right, pretty intuitive. Um, and then you could also have a banner image to kind of make it look you know, much more interesting and engaging. Here, I'm just gonna pick a banner here. If I hit apply down here, you'll immediately see that the banner would appear. And then you could also add a logo. If you guys have a logo, you could add, add that in. Um, and then you want, if you wanna add a subtitle for your booth, you would put something here. And then that would show up right on the booth underneath, underneath the name of the booth. And then down here is something we have a call booth card. And what this booth card is kind of like your business card. And this is what's gonna show up um, when your attendee comes into the art spend event. And you're gonna see a listing of all the booth and this is what it's gonna look like initially. And I, I, I can show that to you a little bit later what I meant by that. So obviously you wanna definitely customize this booth card. So again, just pick the image that you want to have on your booth, uh, put a sh short description. That you want, just like that. And you hit apply again. So you would just go down here and info, you could change it to something like about me. Um, and then uh, obviously add in whatever content you want. You could even add um, uh, images. You could add a video of, of you doing your, your, your artwork. Um, so you could add a video inside this section or you could add a video in this booth video section. So as you can see, as I'm adding editing on the, on the left side, the changes is automatically appearing on the, on the right side. Um, there's a gallery section. This is obviously where you want to put in your artwork. I'm just going to add a book for this book author. Hit apply. Um, as you choose the media, you could upload your images and then you'll add it into this media library of yours. Um, and then you could you know, remove it, 
do whatever you want with it. This is your own media library that you, you can have. And then for each images, you can add a title and even a caption. So if you want to add a caption here, um, you can do that. Hit apply and then the caption then would appear underneath the image. And then there's out of section here that you could keep or you could turn it up. So for calendar, maybe I would say um, upcoming, you know, um, exhibition, right? Then maybe I'll put something here that what I'm gonna be at. So then it's showing up on the on this section. And then let's say, let's say I don't really have anything about services that could just turn it off and that would automatically disappear. And then down here, we have a contact form. So if, if you're not in your booth and, um, and they wanna get a hold of you, they could fill out this form and then, and then you will get an email that somebody was in here and they have a question for you. And then other content is where you would add your website information, your Facebook information. So let's say I have a Facebook page I wanna have on my, on my booth and maybe even a Twitter account. And then when I hit apply, you will see that this is gonna show up underneath my subtitle here. And that's pretty much it to create your booth. Uh, it's very simple, um, it's very straightforward. And once you are ready um, with all the changes, then what you could do is you could hit save and publish. Now, there's one thing that I do want to um, encourage all you guys to do right away is once you create an account and created your booth, you wanna go into the team section here and you would want to make sure that the name, the team name is probably gonna be your, your, your author's name, um, but the team URL is where I recommend that you change this to whatever you want it to be. So in my case, I wanted to just call it John Chess. And then I want my default team booth to be the booth that you're gonna be using to participate in the event. And what, what that, that does is, Anytime people type in this URL, boofy.co slash John Chess, they would immediately get, get taken to your booth directly. So you want the URL to be um, as short, as, as memorable, right? As brandable as, as you want it to be. And once you do that, you can go back to the booth, um, hit manage, hit edit. And then you, hit, you can hit save and publish. And now that basically means that that booth is, is alive. So if I go, if, if you share this link, John Chess, right, as I showed you before, you immediately take you into the, your booth that you just published. And this is what your attendees would actually see when they come in, come into your booth. And then, once you publish the booth, you should send the link, the link of your booth um, to Osman and to Vanessa, and then they could actually then invite your booth into their event. And here, here I'm gonna quickly show you what the event would look like. So this is the virtual um, open studio event. And what they would do is they would invite you into their booth, into their event. So there's already one booth that's already been approved. And once they accepted you, then what would happen is um, your attendees would actually come in through the event page and they would register for the event and then they could enter the event and then you would see all the booths down here. And this is what I meant by the booth card. Uh, there, so I, you know, I'm going to stop here to take any questions, and then we could, 
you know, talk about other things if you guys are interested in uh, other topics. Thank you, Ben. Um, I'm gonna come right in here to give some little SFOS framing on the booth, your booth, your personal booth specific URL and how it's um, related to Open Studios and how that's different for those of you who have been on Booth Central in previous years. So uh, one of our artists just asked if that means that the booth can live beyond SFOS. And while I said yes, I realized I should clarify. Um, so these, you will be able to host folks in your virtual booth for the duration of open studios, meaning your booth, uh, I think Brad was already in there. He can start hosting people from now up until November 13th in that booth. Starting on November 13th, which is the last day of open studios, those booths will no longer be accessible to the public through our Artspan event page. Um, ben can speak about other applications for it beyond open studios, but in terms of, of it being under the umbrella of our event, November 13th would be the last day to host people there. This is different from previous years. Previously, you could only use your booth during our event time. Now we are opening it up. So from whenever you create your booth up until November 13th, you can accept visitors into that booth to engage with you or that booth can live there uh, for your purposes of further promotion of your website, social media. Um, as Ben showed, there's a gallery, a really beautiful gallery that can host photos and videos. Um, and there's a contact page and there, I also saw that there's a subscription, like subscribe to my newsletter section. So this will all be available to you as soon as you share your uh, booth URL with me and I am able to approve you into the event. There's a, a bunch of questions in the chat. I don't know if this is the time we we'll wanna start reviewing them. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see, where are we starting here? Um, so Bao was asking about the uh, the lifespan of the booth and I think you just answered that. Um, someone's asking if you can review how to change the URL. Yeah, absolutely. So again, um, what you would do is you would go back to your dashboard here. So if you were in your booth, just, you know, just to kind of clarify something. So if you were in your booth and you want to kind of get out of it, you would hit your little guy on the on the upper right. You click on dashboard and you would take you back to the booth that you created and you would hit manage and then hit edit. I'm sorry, I take that back. So there's two things you need to uh, worry about. Let me, let me step back a little bit here. Um, so you have a, what we call a team URL. This is like your your first part of URL. Um, so this is where you would change the first part of it. So obviously you'll be like your name of your, um, the name of you know, the artist's name or something else that you wanna call yourself, right? Um, and then you would pick a booth that is the default booth. So what that means is that if they just type just this URL, you would pick them directly to this booth without having any other, um, any other, uh, you know, longer string. Now you could create another booth if you really wanted to. So this is some, not something that I, that's part of this thing. But if you create another booth, you could then um, change have a URL for that booth. But then what would happen is then you'd be like slash John Chess slash that booth's name. Does that does that is that clear? Or should I kind of go a little bit more into into how to do that? Um, we can come back to the URL review. Um, okay. Let's take on a few more questions. Um, Lorraine's asking, is there a tutorial with slides, not video to do this? I think this is the point of this meeting is the tutorial, but is there another link somewhere, Ben, that people can uh, review so like a slideshow? Yeah, absolutely. So there is three things 
that I like to show you. So one thing is once you sign up for an account, we have a quick onboarding thing because I already kind of went through the onboarding thing. There's a little pop-up that will kind of walk you through as how to create the booth. So that's the first thing. Um, it could, you know, to so some people that's kind of annoying, it, you can just turn it off. Um, the second thing that you could do is you go to, go to click on your, your little guy again and go down to help. And that will take you to our help pages. Mm -hmm. And down here, you could click on the booth category. And then there's all kinds of help articles as to like how to set up your booth, um, you know, why you want to create multiple booth, uh, how you invite your customers and out of your booth. Uh, but in this case, you probably, you know, have the, the link to the event, right? Uh, how you change your booth URL. So we have a lot of help articles on that. Okay, that's uh, great. So that's just, you it, just click help. Yep. From the, uh, the, the little icon on the left, the little guy. There we go. Okay. Yeah, and just go to the very bottom. There's a help okay. icon. Great. And then the third, the third thing we have is I could share this link with you um, later, with Vanessa and the team. Um, is we actually have a YouTube channel that has a bunch of um, um, how to sub, sub your booth. So if, you know, you could kind of watch the video, I'm, I, you know, I'm the one that's talking. So you can kind of watch that as you kind of create your booth and kind of follow along as well. So if someone went to YouTube and just looked up Boothy, they'd, they'd find that and. Yeah, so I, I probably shared the link with you guys, uh, with you um, and, you know, yeah, I actually just shared that boothy quick guide to setting up your booth YouTube video. It can also okay. be found. Um, this is for arts and artists. It can also be found in the um, arts bands boothy for SFOS doc, which has been shared with all of you. But I will drop the link again for ease of access. So these videos are directly linked in there as well as in the chat currently. Okay. And we'll make sure, of course, that everyone has access to that through, you, you can either request it of us or we'll be sending out documents that'll have that in it. Um, Catherine asked, how many can, um, can you video chat with at the same time in the booth? So yeah, so you could uh, video chat with up to 15 people in your booth. Um, there's a limit of people that can come into your booth. So for example, you know, I'm actually now in John Chess booth, um, but so, more, you know, unlimited number could be in here, so, um, but there's, yeah. So if we have a hundred people in attendance, they could all go into the same booth at the same time? Yes, yes, except except that the video chat, um, to go in to actually do a video chat, that's limited to 15 people at a time. Oh, I see, 15, okay. So you can actually yeah. interact, you know, looking people in the eye. <laughs> up exactly. To, up to 15, okay. Yeah. Um, and. and and unlike Booth Central, we actually have the booth, the text chat here that, that again, you know, I think up to a hundred people can actually text chat um, here. So if they don't feel comfortable, you know, showing their faces, they could just kind of text chat, um, okay. you know, everybody here, or they could go into the video chat. Now the video chat is only enabled when the, when the booth host, when the booth owner is actually in the booth, and then the booth owner have to basically start the video chat for other people to actually join in. Um, right. So that way we don't have like random people talking to each other without the booth host. Right. Um, and, then, and then you can come in and um, can turn on the video. Um, so you could, so there are a few things you could also uh, do as a booth host. Um, here is, is going to be a list of all the people that are actually in this booth, whether they're on video chat or not, they're going to sh all showing up here and they all have to provide a name so that you could, you know, somehow address them. Right. Um, and then if they are being kind of rule, you know, that's, that's, you know, people could be, um, video bombing or whatever bombing you could hang them up. Uh, and then if they come, try to come back again, you could even, uh, ban them if you want. Okay. Good to know. Um, Rachel's asking, are we meant to sell art directly through Boothy? And I know before we uh, started the program, Ben was talking with the Artspan team about the fact they're working on uh, getting Spotify linked up. Do you want to talk about that for a minute, Ben? Yeah, sure. Um, we are actually working on a Shopify integration. So if you have a Shopify store to sell your art, 
you could actually um, pretty quick, pretty soon. We, it's not available right now, but pretty soon you could actually add your Shopify store inside your booth, similar to this gallery here. And then you could actually list your actual Shopify products and the price, right? Um, and then they could actually add um, the products directly inside the booth. Inside, we, we're going to have like a, a cart. You could add it and then they could actually check out through the booth without having to exit the, uh, the booth. So it's fully, it's going to be fully integrated. Um, so we're going to have that available. What yeah. about artists that uh, don't utilize Shopify? Did, I think I said Spotify earlier. So apologies for that. I meant Shopify. <laughs> but yeah, for, you know, if you don't have Shopify and you use, you know, usually process your sales in a different means. Um, yeah. What is the most uh, suggested way for an artist to handle a transaction like that? And using yes. I think the best way to do that would just go to your gallery, right? Um, and then add in your products. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, for example, let's say you want to sell this book, right? Then you could probably put something like put um, whatever you want in here, right? You could put in, um, you know, a price, right? You could put the price in or, or even a link, maybe not even the price, maybe just a link um, to the book so that they could click on the link and then that would take them to, but they'll take them out of the booth, but that, you know, but they, at least they could go to your, um, to your site and actually purchase that item. Yeah, assuming that you have a point of sale set up on your website, but otherwise, yeah. Rachel, um, yeah, you might it might be a matter of because um, I know like most of us in person, you know, we take Square yeah. or Venmo or PayPal or something like that, where we're like actually swiping a card. Or I think some people are uncomfortable providing their credit card information through, you know, like typing it in or yeah. Um, can I hop in and yeah. just say from based off of my experience in Booth Central last year, um, artists that were interacting using the video chat feature and closing sales were dropping links in the chat to process those. So like if you already have Venmo and that's a source you use, you could share your Venmo so that someone can find you and complete their payment that way. Um, as Diane said, if you already have a point of sale in some fashion already set up that you use, it could go in the website uh, feature. Like if you have a shop set up, you could use that as your web link in your boothy, or you can be sharing that um, in the chat. But I bought like five pairs of earrings from someone and we, it was very much like this, like we, we talked about it, we went through, she showed me all of the earrings, she like held them up to her ears and then she told, she walked me through how to pay it. So it felt almost like an in-person interaction, as close as you could get to an in-person interaction on, on a, sorry, I just realized I have my video off, um, on a virtual platform. So I would say taking advantage of the video features and the live chat features to close those sales or try to see if you can push someone um, to make those purchases, if not linking directly to whatever shop you have as your one of your websites or social media um, icons at the top of the booth. Okay, great. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, so Brad, who I believe is the person who does have the existing booth for, you know, with Artspan that we just saw a moment ago. Um, he's asking uh, what happens to those booths after our open studios program. So after the, the cutoff date of November 14th, um, what does Boothy do with the booths? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the, the, the short answer is we don't know. <laughs> um, so basically our, our model is that um, we, we, were go, we are actually planning to charge uh, by month, right? So if you want a, want a, a booth, um, up to free booth, we would basically charge a monthly fee so that, um, so that you can you know, continue using it. Um, but at this stage, it's still really early for us. Um, so we actually just kind of encourage people to just keep using it. Um, we don't really have any plans to like just shut the booths down for you guys. And I, as I explained to Vanessa, um, I'm open to just having them open for the time being and just let you guys keep using it. And what, you know, what I ask in return is just have some feedback 
from you guys to to say, hey, was this was this thing useful? And uh, could you know could you guys use it uh, to really get more engagement and get more sales and get more people to uh, to learn more about your art? Um, and then and then we could definitely like let you hear more feedback and as to how to improve uh, our product so that you guys find more use for it. Um, so eventually we will be uh, we'll be will we start charging uh, people for it, but obviously we would let you guys know before we actually do that. Okay. Um, so another URL question. I, I noticed when you were you started us out with you know going um, with uh, the setup on the left, you went through settings and brand and info, and at some point in there, there was mm -hmm. a URL customization and then later yeah. after you completed that you went back to the team url can you explain the difference between those two different yeah. URLs? yeah so yeah so it is a little confusing so i apologize for that um because we made it so flexible that it's it's a little bit confusing so again yeah so let me explain this let me actually let me go back and create different booth i'll say uh So if you go to settings here, I'm, I just created a second book. And let's say, let's say this person is multi-talented. He's an author and an artist. So now I want to call, um, so I want this to call um, the out, you out to be John Chess artist, okay? So what that means that is that if I use this URL, John Chess slash artist, you will come to this booth. Mm -hmm. um, if I, if I go to, um, just John Chess, it will actually go to the first booth because this is the default booth. Okay. Is that, yeah. So let me go back here, um, again to the, to the uh, author booth. So you see that. You could also um, use John Chess slash John Chess, and it would also take you to this booth. So the the default short version, right, is you could pick which booth to go to. Okay, so that sounds to me like the, the, the purpose of the team is that you're combining all of your booths, but most of our artists are gonna just have one booth, but they Correct. still need to align it with a team, even though the team is a, is a team of one. Yeah. So, for example, like, like, let me, um, let me give you a better ex explanation about this. Um, here, here's a, here's what, this is our booths, right? Um, so our booth is our obviously it's Boothy. So what our team is called is just called Boothy, right? Boothy.co slash Boothy. Mm -hmm. And down here, I could, I have a bunch of booths that I we created, right? So if I, if somebody types in just slash Boothy which booth do I want that URL to go to, right? So I, so in this case, we, we decide to pick a boothy, a booth called boothy. Um, so instead of typing slash boothy slash boothy, it just go to that one booth. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. And I think, I think it'll make more sense when we're, we've got our booths up and running and we're seeing how they're interacting with each other. But, okay yeah i hope so i'm i'm sorry i'm trying to think how that applies to open studios and i'm wondering if i'm understanding correctly that yeah someone could create two boothies as we see here on this page one if if one wanted to one being a general evergreen artist um booth and one being maybe a more targeted sf open studios booths let's say yeah. that you are focusing on promoting specific pieces from a specific collection or you are you have some sort of focus that you want to target during the time of open studios you might have a boothy or a booth that's like Vanessa dash SFOS or something as opposed to Vanessa Wilson would that be yeah that could that definitely could be yeah so you could definitely change the URL to match the SF Right, it's to be San Francisco Open Studio specific. Now, having said that, um, when the event actually starts, 
what's going to happen is, um, let me go back here real quick to odd span. Um, it's kind of, um, you know, for the event itself, it's, it's kind of not really, what's the word? Um, it doesn't really matter because what happened is, you know, this is the link that the attendee is going to come to, right? They want to come to the, the event link that Open Studio share, right? And then they would enter the event using this button. And then they would enter Brad's booth just by clicking enter booth. They, we, they don't have to know what the, the actual URL out is for your booth. So the, that booth URL is only for like when you want to promote your booth outside of the event. Okay. Does that does that make sense? Yeah. So it's not necessarily for Artspan's October twenty sixth date. It's Correct. for where, like outside of those dates, if you wanted to um, yeah. invite people in before or after Artspan's event. Okay. Correct. Yeah. And then and then if you if they enter through the event, what you see that on top here is that there's a back arrow, right? So they could just once they enter Brad's booth, they could click back out, and then they could enter a different booth from there. Okay. Um, great. So Emily is asking uh, if we can talk about what it's like in the moments of having the booth open. Is it live and awkward to interact with people? Um, and so we've done, this is the third year that we've done a version of virtual open studios in the past two years. Same company, but it was called Booth Central. And this is like the new improved super deluxe version of Booth Central that we're calling Boothy. But in the previous years, um, it's, you know, it's it's nice. It's it's different than doing it in person because it, there is a virtual screen, but now we're, you know, everyone's done hundreds of Zoom encounters and other, you know, virtual things. So it's becoming less and less weird. And, um, you know, you do kind of have to think about how you're gonna set up your, you know, your work, are you actually going to physically hold it up and show them? Or are you going to rely on all these wonderful new components that Ben's showing us about uploading all your images and everything? I think that with this new, all the new features, it kind of makes more sense to rely on all the images and the videos and the, and the, and the links to really showcase your art rather than trying to awkwardly hold it up in front of the camera. And, um, but, you can do probably, you know, a, a version of both to some degree. Um, and some people, you know, just like in a re regular open studios, some people are just awkward. <laughs> and I don't mean the artists, I mean the visitors, you know, so like they don't really, you know, they might come in and they don't know what to do. So just like in a real life situation, you know, it's kind of up to the artist to like break the ice and have, have your little elevator pitch ready to present and um, and have some questions for your guests so it kind of gets them comfortable. Um, yeah, anyone else, uh, artist or staff, want to chime in with their own experience or add to what I've just said about doing it with Booth Central previously? Please unmute yourself and chime in for a moment. I think um, your suggestion is brilliant, Diane. Um, so uh, the reason I say that is brilliant is because last year um, I was doing it and then I heard that Holly Wong was actually, I don't know if she was actually presenting physical work, but she had a PowerPoint and it was pretty impressive. She would just um, like take people through the PowerPoint. So now utilizing the resources for Boothy, I don't have to create a PowerPoint or presentation. I could just yeah. use what's native and it's, it works. It's, it's, it'll be seamless. So. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about it too because um yeah, showing my my three-dimensional work on a two-dimensional screen is awkward, but um I do think I will be able to, given the time to put in to set up all the images and you know do a little custom video and everything, but I think it'll be worth it and it's just much more easy to rely on that and then I can I don't even have to be at my studio. I can just <laughs> do it from my bedroom or wherever and but still have a, a engaging experience. Yeah, and I like to think of it, think of your virtual booth as like a physical booth, like you're actually at an art fair, right? This, this is your booth, like this is what you want to showcase in your booth is kind of on the, on the left side, right? 
And then, um, and then when people come into your video chat, it's just like they're coming, walking into your booth, and then you just you just start talking to them. You know, they say, "Hey, hi, how's it going?" You know, um, so that's how I would I how I would think about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, in person uh, visits, like I said, can just be just as awkward as virtual ones. So you just you yeah. know get the hang of it, and you kind of just learn to how to make them feel comfortable, and then they ease into it as, as well. Uh, Rachel also asked um, about, she says, do you schedule when uh, schedule when you will be present in your booth to have video chats? So for the purpose of our open student, you know, our span's open studios date of October 26, the times, what did we say the times were? Team, is it five to seven? Of, yes, um, five to seven. Five to seven. Thank you, Anna. So that'll be five to seven p.m. That it'll be like the art span events, two hours. But um, if you want to do, if you want to have people in your booth before that, or even you know the days after that, uh, um, then yes, you can personally set up a time and invite either small groups at a time or you know your larger network. Um, so as long as you're in your booth, you're able to have video chats with anyone who enters it and joins you there up to 15 people at a time. Correct? Am I correct on that, Ben? Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and one thing I want to point out is um, we, we're going to even actually make this a little bit better. We already, um, let me go through this. So if you're not in your booth and people actually come into here, um, they could leave you a message. Um, but if they check this box, like they, I want to talk to you now, um, they could check this box. And what happened is if you provide your mobile number, um, in your profile down here, and you verify the number that this is actually your phone number. Um, if they do that, if they enter the booth and they fill in this this message, you would actually get an SMS that somebody is in your booth and they want to talk to you. And then you can quickly jump back in and, and engage that uh, that person. And you know, the way that we think about it is you want to engage that person when they're the most interested, right, in what you what you um what you're selling at that at that time right. that's um, very helpful yeah and then the other thing that we we haven't have it in live yet but we already implemented it's going to come out in about the next week or so um is that um you would also get a uh, you can also turn on the notification if somebody actually enter your booth you can actually get a notification on your phone it's like if you just walk away right um to get something to eat or something like that and somebody walks in and you would actually get a thing that somebody is um is you know is in your booth right um and you could turn that off right when you don't want it you could turn that off and you can turn it back on okay because one of the feedback that we got was um from previous event it's like well do i just sit here and stare at my screen <laughs> right for four hours of you know waiting for people to come in can can i can you guys just let me know when somebody comes into a booth, and this is why we, we added that feature. Okay. Uh, another question in the chat is, um, is the text chat visible to everyone in the booth? So if someone sends a text or whatever, a chat message, is it, is, is it private or does everyone that's in there see it? Yeah, so it is public at this point in time. Um, so again, it's, it's just imagine like you are in a regular physical booth, right? A bunch of people walk in and they start talking. Right, so you could hear the conversation. So right now is is really a group chat. Now, um, having said that, let's say you had some conversation with somebody, and then somebody else come in, and you don't want them to see the history of it. There's a room here that you could clear the history. You could basically clear out what you just talked about, um, and then and then that way, then people who come in later would not be able to see it. But if, if they were all in there at the same time and you start texting each other, everybody else can see it. Uh, another similar question is, can you do private videos or chat sessions? Is there a way to make it exclusive? Yeah, so right now there isn't a way to do that, but okay. we do have we do have that on the roadmap so that eventually you could go into a uh, a one-to-one -one chat. Eventually. Okay, so you're working yep. towards that. I see. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, so if when that is available, you'll let us know and we'll pass it along. Okay. Um, yes. Emily's asking what kind of artist benefits from Boothy the most painters versus jewelry artists and uh, Emily, I feel like it could be any type of artist. Um, 
especially now, like we were talking about before with these new features where you can really set up a total visual portfolio and link it to every single one of your social media sites and your website and every single thing and your, you know, Shopify, your point of sale. I don't think that um, a two-dimensional artist would benefit any less than a three-dimensional artist or vice versa for that matter. Um, and if anyone wants to chime in on that with their two cents, you're welcome to. Um, I'm just looking through the chat and Sarah asked, what's Evma? Y E V M A. I'm not sure where she's getting that. Is that what was that? Right? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> um, yeah. So we actually partner with a startup called Yetma and they are a payment, um, payment processor, kind of like square in a way like square. Um, and so if you don't use any other way to sell your products, like, you know, you don't use PayPal, Vimeo or whatever, and you, and you just want something to, to get going, um, we, you could definitely use the MS. So here's what I can show you is go back to edit, go to the payment section. I didn't bring this up because I know that most people already use PayPal and Vimeo and Shopify, but if you want a way to like collect payment and have people pay for uh, certain things, you could definitely use Yetma to, to try and set that up. Um, so to learn how that works, how to set it up, you can just click on how to, how to work. And then um, Yetma has a way to walk you through to how to set up your account. And one of the cool thing about Yetma is that people can actually pay for whatever you're selling um, by using an SMS message. So they could just tax you um, the payment through the phone. Okay. So yeah, so it's 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 kind of short for me to explain all of this uh, in this in this session. But if you want to learn more about it, if you definitely want to try it, and you need some help on how to do it. Um, we're more than happy uh, to to you know ask answer any questions on how to do that. Okay. Um, and another question is: Do visitors have to create an account with Boothy? No, they no, they do not. Um, yeah. So all they would do is they would come in, and then all they would have to do is, in fact, I think if they if you register register through the event, they don't even have to create account or enter their name because they already done that already. Who's already done that already? I'm uh, sorry. So um, let me go back here. So what I meant by that is, um, so I'm registered because I'm kind of logged in and and part of part of the uh, this event. But if I'm just a regular attendee, you would see a register button here. Right. So when they when they register, their information is already dead, like their name and um, the email address. So once once they do that, they could just enter the event and then enter here without signing for any account or anything like that. OK, so they need. So registration is simply their name and email address and then they're done. Yeah. And they're in. Yeah. That's all yeah. that's going to be asked of the visitors. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another question, can I turn my gallery images into a slideshow that runs automatically? So, uh, that's a good question. Um, load a bunch of images of our work with the titles and all the information. Is there a way that it can, it'll just like keep spinning like a, like a slideshow? Not at this time, but that's a, that's a great, uh, possible feature. Um, the other thing you could do is you could like create a slideshow out of a video, right? Like a YouTube video with um with a bunch like I said, play through the play through the slide, and you could put put the video in in here. You could do that. That would be a, a, a alternative way of having a slideshow. Okay. Um question from Jane is Artspan advertising Boothy for the entire time of open studios or just the one day um, we're advertising our virtual event the October 26th event we'll be giving um, heavy promotion to that along with all of the in-person weekends 
but we will not be promoting the booths outside of our Artspan event. So if you guys want to have your visitors come during a day that's not sponsored by Artspan, you're welcome to do that, but we are, uh, you'll have to promote that on your own. I also want to piggyback on that answer uh, to say that in the online guide, there's a feature to drop in your direct link to your specific boothy. Um, so if you use that feature, we will be promoting the online guide throughout the season of SF Open Studios. And you can, as long as you populate that field, um, anyone who is directed to the online guide will theoretically have access to that direct link as well. Okay. Uh, Bao, it looks like Bao dropped in a screenshot of something. Um, and, and I'm not sure, if Ben, you're able to go into the chat to see, but he's asking, is there a way to customize the gallery? At the moment, my uploaded work is cropped long and horizontal. So if we put in images of our work that are, do they have to be sized specifically in order to fit within the, the allotted space or? Are there ways that we can um, yeah, not that I know of, but if you um if you could send me um a support email, we could definitely look into it. If you tell me like what your booth is, we could definitely look into it and and see if we could help with like making it look look better. Okay. So I, I think that like as I remember Booth Central before, there was like um the what you would upload your images into there was specific size requirements like they were like sort of a long you know elongated rectangle yeah is, is it the same way yeah. now? um i don't know about the gallery um because i haven't really played much with the gallery so um that's that's a good question if you guys need some help with the gallery but for the other images we do have recommended um sizing requirements so if you go in here again and hit edit Go different like brand it would tell you what aspect ratio would work the best okay. um so down here this is also it's usually like 16 by 9 would, would be the best the best way the best sizing and it doesn't say that in the gallery that yeah it does not but I, I think the gallery is a lot more flexible um let me see if i could find a different booth that has more pictures in there Let's see this one. Yeah, so these are lot different different aspect ratio. They seem to look okay. I mean, um, and you can expand them and then you could kind of slide them. You know, if you're having a tap, you could just use a thumb and just slide them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so it, again, yeah, again, if you can't get something to work, let us know and we'll definitely try to help you guys make that work. Okay, so Bao, we can we can put you in touch with Ben or one of somebody on the team and get it straightened out what your what your gallery needs are. Yeah. Um, question is being asked: Can I sh share a screen from another site for my guests? So if so, you're in a video, can, is there like a screen share option if someone wants to go to? Yeah, something? absolutely. So let me go back to. Yeah, so if you start the video chat, right, and you, you know, just like a Zoom kind of Zoom session. And this is, a, there's a share button here, down here. And then you could, you know, share whatever window or screen you want. Um, so once you do that, let's see if I can pick something here. And how, does it, will it slow down things by doing that? Because I know sometimes doing that, you know, from Zoom, we screen share, and if you go to like YouTube or something, then it's kind of slows things down because it's kind of like working harder to do that. Yeah, it work a little bit harder, but I don't think it was slow things down that much. I think it should work pretty well. Now, the other thing that I want to point out, that, which I kind of forgot, is that you could, there's a little arrow here thing. And what you could do is if you click on this, that expands the, the right side of the video. So I'm sharing the screen right now, but if I stop sharing it, then you know, then I have a much bigger yeah. um, video. So you can also resize it like this. 
but you can completely hide everything. So whatever you're comfortable with using, there's also a speaker view and a, uh, a grid view. So if you have more than one people, it would be a, a grid, of, grid of people. Okay. Great. Lots of bells and whistles to play with. Yes. Um, another question, can you insert an HTML or JavaScript in, say, the info section? Uh, I'm not sure you could, you could try, but um, it's already um, built in so that it's, it's kind of like HTML. Um, what I meant by that is, let me go back. It is already a, a rich editor. Um, so for example, let me go back to the info section. So I, you already could do things like, let's say I highlight this, right? I could make that heading one, right? We can make this much larger. Um, I could bolt this, right? So it's almost like an HTML editor without having you to put in the HTML code directly. Um, then you could do, you know, things like, um, right, you could do, a bullet points. Mm -hmm. um, so it's pretty already pretty flexible. You can add a link. Okay. Um, yeah. So I. So yeah. I don't, I don't think you could add. You know. You could add directly enter HTML code, but it's really like an HTML editor here. Okay. Um, I think that got through the questions in the chat. Does anyone want to raise their hand? Either. So I can actually see you. Yes, Brad, go ahead. Do you want to ask a question directly? Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, I just wanted to give some feedback on setting up the site because I actually got quite a bit of help through uh, uh, the chat feature on the site. But there's a number of things that um, you may want to do that the different sections don't look like you can do. And what I'm trying to say is when you set up the categories, you can change the name of the category. So in my case, I wanted to put my artwork first and my bio second. So I just named the, the section that would normally be my bio, the gallery, and put my images in there. And then I named the next section the um, bio, okay? And that worked for me. Uh, the other thing that's a problem is depending on if you want to use an image of your artwork as a banner, it's almost impossible on this site because if you choose any colors that are dark, it completely obscures the images. Uh, I gave them some feedback on this earlier. So I guess you have to either choose their banner images or you can't really use your own because they won't show up unless you choose a very, very light background. Um, so anyway, those are just a few uh, comments I had, and I'm sure um, you know Ben has probably already heard them before. But um, uh, uh, I think artists sometimes want to have the information presented in a little different way. Yeah, that's great feedback. Um, if you could send me, like, if you don't mind me sending the image that you want to use as a banner, I would definitely uh, play with that to see if we could make make it work better. Okay, well, it's on my site right now, but okay. you cannot see it because I chose a dark green background. And with the dark green, it changes all the text to light color, but then the actual banner image is almost non readable. It would be nice if that whole section did not have any background behind it. Okay, that's good feedback. Yeah, thank you, Brad, for bringing that up and for your your notes on your experience. Um, you guys, it is 7.30, so we are going to close uh, this session for the evening. I appreciate everyone coming and asking your questions. I hope that um, you're feeling good about giving this a try. It does come as part of your registration for Open Studios, so um, I think it's worth giving it a try and having the experience. And um, again, thank you for joining us this evening. Any final comments from Ben or Vanessa to close us out? Yeah, well, just thanks for having me uh, on this call. Um, and, you know, we're happy to help in any way. So, um, you know, if you guys need help with setting up the booth or anything in general, just send, um, you can send an email to support at boothcentral.com. Um, or there's actually a text bubble 
um, on the lower right of the of the screen. And if you click on that, a, a pop-up will come up and you can text us um, and ask us anything you any help that you got you guys need. Yeah, Ben has expressed it. he's been very accommodating. He wants to hear what's working for us and what's not. And if there's something we need, he he wants to give it a, a shot to try to make that happen for us. So um, definitely communicate to us uh, your needs as you're creating your booth. And uh, we'll be sending out more information about how to get started very soon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone.